Okay, so what my topic was for tonight um, is diamonds, diamond strategies, and what do diamonds do and how do they do it to actually get, and our diamond is our very top level in plexus. So as you're kind of going through the ranks, the, the pinnacle of the, the, the promotions is the diamond level, which means you have um, what we call points. You have 4,500 points in your organization, which that can look like a lot of different numbers of people, but 4,500 points is a lot because levels one through three are worth five points, down to seven is worth one point. I won't get into that today. I know that those of you that are new, that might make your head spin a little bit like, what are you talking about points? Um, but there are pay points, and that's where, that's where the most exciting part of our compensation plan comes in is those pay points because they're worth – we have a profit-sharing model. Um, so the pay points are really fun, and they're important to understand. Are you all the way down in Georgia? If you don't understand them oh, – I thought I muted everybody. Hold on. Seven hours. Hello? Are you feeling okay? He's muted. Yep. Okay, there we go. Mommy, I'm Sorry. scared and Lexi. Okay, go find Daddy. I'm in the middle of a team call, okay? Sorry, guys. That's the five-year-old that's not in bed. Um, okay, so let me get keep going. So, um, okay, so if you're a diamond, that's a top level. So what do they do and how do they do it? And so what I – I'm not a diamond. I'm a senior ruby working – not a diamond yet, working towards it. That is obviously my ultimate goal. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea of what diamonds, you know, earn in our company is it probably about – between four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars a year, and so um, you know the people that get to that diamond level are doing quite well and have ultimately. Huh? I'm sorry, you guys. I'm so sorry. Like I said, they're usually in bed, but tonight didn't work out so good. Um, go get daddy. Can you go get daddy, sweetie? Just go in there, honey bear. Um, okay. So number one. Work. So what I did is I did like a, a, I thought about a top, you guys, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Somebody, okay, get him. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. So what I did was a top 10 list, um, you know, because it's always fun to do lists. And so kind of starting at number 10, working down to number one, and number one being my biggest observation and what of what I think a diamond strategy is, like why they're diamonds and, and why, they're, why they're successful in the company. So we'll start at number 10. Um, number 10, and these are all, like I said, observations of mine from talking with them, learning from them, watching how they run their businesses, watching those diamond documentaries, and so forth. Number 10, from the very beginning, they work like a professional. They think of their business, they think of their Plexus business like a professional business, and from the very beginning worked, when they decided to draw their line in the sand, they truly worked their business professionally like it was a business. Um, they went at this with the willingness to work hard, and then Plexus um, was in no way going to be a lottery ticket. It was not going to be, oh, I'm gonna find that one rock star, and that one rock star is gonna get me to diamond, or that one rock star is gonna make me you know, rich. Absolutely in no way did any of them do that. It was always in the very beginning. I'm willing to work hard and I'm willing to put everything forth into this in order to share with um, and be professional about it. So that's number 10. Number nine, um, they're all consistent. They'll all tell you we can work our business part time, but we can't work our business sometimes. Consistency is key. Consistency is very important. So what does consistency look like? Consistently look. What that looks like is carving out time on a daily basis to specifically pour into your business. Now, what's wonderful about Plex is that it's not an eight hour a day job. It's not a nine to five like we traditionally would go and earn a paycheck for. But in fact, it's something that you can fit into the nooks and crannies of your life and it can very much work with your life whether you have children whether you have another job you know you have other things going on plexus is mobile and it works but it does need to fit in and so um, people that are successful in this business always figure out a way to make to, they work it into their lives we've talked a lot about that kind of that scheduling of time when is it going to work so you can work it part-time but not sometimes all right the eighth thing that I have found from diamonds is their unwavering belief. They have unwavering belief in the products. They have unwavering belief in the company. And they also have unwavering belief in themselves. 
um, which is a, a kind of a, a, that humble confidence. But um, they believe they, they've established their why. We've talked a lot about that, knowing your why. They've established their why. They know their why. And they also they come back to that why when, they go, when it's a little bit tough because it's not always going to be wonderful. I mean, there's going to be great days. And, and again, anybody that's super successful will tell you, you know, you have these days where you know, people are joining and your customers are happy and you're getting wonderful messages and it's awesome. And then you're going to have some days where it's just not working for people and they're frustrated and they're negative. And, um, what people that are diamonds that are successful in business will all tell you is if their belief in the products are so strong that when someone comes to them and says, it's not working for me, I'm not losing weight, I'm not feeling anything. They, of course, work with that person and that customer and, you know, ask the right questions and try to help them and give them tips and want to, they want the person to be successful, but they know without, with an unwavering belief that the products work because they've worked for them and they've worked for the people and their customers. They've worked for others. They've seen testimonies and they've been, they've been pouring into learning about those testimonies. And so it's okay. Um, so that unwavering belief is really important. And when you have a great belief in the products and the company, your enthusiasm kind of pours out of you everywhere that you go. And so when you're enthusiastic and you're passionate about something, people are attracted to that and they want that. People want to feel better. They want something that's, um, that's, that it represents hope. And so that's what Plexus does. And so diamonds always kind of have that belief that people are attracted to. Um, number seven for successful is that they're goal setters. And we talked at a whole call about goals a couple of weeks ago, how important setting goals are. Um, goal setters, write things down. That's so important to be writing down goals, making daily lists. Um, I know that when I, you know, Celeste was kind of talking to me and training me, one of the first things she told me to do was to get the, the, the notebook. And I have my pink notebook. Your notebook goes everywhere with you. And you're constantly like writing things down, making down notes. Um, you know, when you meet somebody out, you're jotting it down. When you come up with an idea, you write it down. When you come up, you know, you think of somebody to be a great ambassador, you write it down. So you kind of always have ongoing lists. You have these daily lists, um, daily things that you want to get accomplished. Then you also have monthly goals that are written on your calendar and then plan out a year. Where do you see yourself in a year? And so when you have those written down, um, you have them, you have a roadmap. And so they're all goal setters. All right. Number six successful diamond ambassadors do is they're always prepared always prepared when they're in public face to face with people you know we love that our a lot of our business and most of our business does come from facebook and it does come from social media but people that really take it to the next level get out from behind the computer and when they're out in public they're ready and prepared and looking for opportunities to share the plexus products with the people that they run into in their everyday lives you know and that's just in your walk every single day um make sure that wasn't somebody that was tough sorry i just got texted sometimes i get messages while i'm doing my calls um so they're always prepared. So they, that means being prepared looks like certainly business cards. If you don't have business cards, you have business cards. It's an inexpensive investment. Um, their car or purse or whatever it is, is always going to have samples, for sure, catalogs, like a supply stock, because you just never know when you're going to run in to in some place and someone's going to be interested in the products and you want to be prepared and you want to have it. You want to have it right there to be able to give them the information that they need. Um, so successful ambassadors, like I said, get out from behind the computer, look for ways naturally to share. So I love today, Lisa Weinkamp shared about what happened to her in the nail salon when she had an opportunity to, she started a conversation with someone that she was sitting with beside. And then by the time she got out of there, the whole nail salon was interested in what she was talking about. She was able to share Plexus. She was able to learn about the health problems of the people sitting in there. Um, and so that's really how you do it. You just... Wherever you're going, if you're at a baseball game and you're sitting beside a mom, you know, you kind of just kind of for a minute get out of your comfort zone and strike up a conversation. And then the conversation can very naturally lead into, hey, what do you do for a living? And then you say, Plexus, have you heard of it? And so you can have that conversation. And so um, really being prepared and looking for opportunities to share in their everyday activities. All right, so number five, what do diamond ambassadors do? They're super positive people. 
period. Very, very positive. Um, they're the kind of people that turn things that are negative into teaching and learning opportunities. They have a teachable spirit. So when something doesn't go well, instead of placing blame or being really negative or kind of staying in the net, net negative place, they look for ways to, to make it a half glass full type of um, situation and they learn from it. And so um, really, really positive and always projecting sort of that positive attitude on, the so on social media and anywhere that they're represented. Uh, that is very important. Almost like, almost like Facebook, if that's what we're using to build our business as a resume, you want good, positive things on your resume. And so Facebook and social media is much the same. All right. So number four, what do diamond ambassadors do? They have fun. Oh my gracious. We have a lot, a lot of fun. Um, figure out, find ways to make it fun. Find ways to have fun with your team, to have fun team events, to have fun team dinners, to do great contests, to show appreciation and recognition, and just really enjoy each other in the journey. Um, I think you see that so much. You know, I know I love seeing pictures. Uh, Celeste is one of my Facebook friends and they're always meeting and having coffee and, and laughing and taking funny selfies. And so they have fun. Definitely. Okay. Um, number three, I'm working my way up to the number one, number three things that diamond ambassadors do is they're always willing to get out of a comfort zone. They're always ready and willing to push themselves to the next level, to not stay where they are. When something, and this is across the board, that when I've talked to people that are really successful in this company, everybody has roadblocks and everybody runs up against walls. I mean, that is like across the board. It's not one of these things where it's just, it magically happens. And all of a sudden they're, you know, a diamond ambassador making $500,000 a year. And they have this enormous, huge team of thousands and thousands of people. At some point in their business, they've all run into something that just felt like a wall. Um, but instead of like just staying in the wall, they figure out a way to push over the wall. They pick, figure out a way to, to get around that wall and to knock it down. And that uh, most of the time means personal growth. I think self-reflection, looking in the mirror and not thinking, oh, it's something, you know, there's external factors that are causing this wall to be up in front of me. It's not external factors. It's a willingness to look in the mirror and say, what is it in me that can change? How can I do better? Whether it be doing better for my team, whether it be doing better as uh, um, you know, my customers, time management, what organization, whatever it is, acknowledging it and then figuring out a way to push it to the next level and getting out of the comfort zone. Um, and so I think that's pretty universal. Um, no comfort zone. People that are diamonds don't stay in their comfort zone and they invest a lot in personal growth and personal development. And I think that Lisa did a great call on that last Tuesday. If you were on that whole call was really about personal growth and personal development. Um, okay. Number two, the number two thing that I've observed from Diamond Ambassadors is that they're truly humble servants. I think that you'll see that when you watch the Diamond documentaries. And I just posted that um, this week as a, just a fun contest that we have a Diamond, Puxus has a Diamond documentary YouTube channel. So, you know, it was a contest, watch as many as you can, put your name in a drawing, which that ends tonight. So that contest ends tonight, so you still have till midnight to watch your Diamond documentaries um, and to be entered in the contest. But I think with, if you watch those, one thing that you see really coming through in all of them is that they're really hum humble about their position and humble about being a Diamond. They don't look, there's no glory involved. There's no like, I did it. I'm great. You know, I can't believe that I'm a Diamond. It's always a very much a, a servant-like attitude where they're always looking for ways to, to make their team better, to help somebody what, you know, when they first join the company, to, to get them engaged, get them involved, to, to meet their needs, to, to, um, to serve them. And I think it was Tamara Holloway said something to the effect of um, she always looks at each, each team member and tries to make each team member feel like they're the only one on her team. And that, to me, that just really struck me and really hit me. I think that is just beautiful and wonderful um, that she makes. And I'm going to tell a little bit about Tamara Holloway. She's a really cool, 
cool person. She grew her, she grew her business to a point and she hit a wall and she, she has, it has part of her testimony where she started her team starting um, going backwards that the attrition rate on her team was going backwards meant she was losing points every month instead of gaining and she did that where she really evaluated what am I doing how can I make this different um, how can I change the direction of my team and so she really went all out and started really pouring into her team and really um, doing three-way calls and one-on-ones and, and just really going forward into the sense of, of, of that idea, making everybody feel special and, and feel like they were really a part of something. And now she has the fastest growing team in the, in the whole company. And she gets on, I think on the top of the building bonuses list every, um, every week. And so she's got a great story. So she's a neat one to learn from. Um, so humble servants is definitely number two, looking for extra ways to, to make your team feel special. Lots of recognition, lots and lots of recognition and lots of appreciation showing that they really appreciate their team members. Now, what are some ways we can do that, you know, without breaking the bank? Certainly if you're a diamond, you can afford to send lots of nice gifts, which I don't even see a lot of them doing that. Honestly, I don't think that's what it's about, but so, you know, when someone on your team assigns a new ambassador, immediately you get that email, send them a text. Oh my gracious, great job, congratulations. Send them a personal message on Facebook. One of the things I love about Facebook is they have that record mechanism on the personal messaging and so you just, you know, you can be in the car driving down the road, you press the record button and you just say, hey, I'm just thinking about you, wondering how your, you know, your day is going, how's your business going, give me a call, let's catch up. Something really simple and really quick but it shows that you're, you know, taking the time to reach out. So if you have a team of one or two people or you have a team of 100 people, you know, just making that, that extra effort, just something very quick, you can help even 100 people and show them, you know, that you're thinking about them and caring about them. Um, certainly handwritten cards are great because we don't do that nearly enough. It's, you know, it used to be, we used to think that getting stuff in our mailbox was a little bunch of junk mail, but now we're so used to emails and we get a card, something real in the mailbox. It's super exciting. So I encourage you guys to send notes. Um, and speaking of which, if you don't actually have a team, this is talking about humble servants. You can be a humble servant to your customers also by doing these extra little things to them, checking in with them, how the product's going, you know, how can I help you, sending messages, sending cards. So, you, you know, you can do that for your, because most so many, many times when you pour into a customer, that customer becomes a team member. That happens a lot. Those are very, very good um, ambassadors to have are the ones that are already really excited about the products when they sign up because they can really hit the ground running. Um, okay, so that was number two, humble servants, never looking for glory, always looking for ways to serve others. And the number one thing, and I did really good on time, you guys, the number one thing that I have observed with diamonds in the company is that they truly love others. They just love people. and. I think, um, you know, that there's just not a whole lot more to it, but really genuinely love people. Um, and so I, you know, and as I, as I kind of made this list and I was looking through and I thought number one and number two, love others. And number two, you know, being a humble servant, there's this really cool guy that lived like 2000 years ago that ended up walking on water. And that's kind of like what his whole life was about, right? You guys, I mean, that's actually what the whole, our whole Jesus model, our God on earth, so to speak is, um, his, his number one commandment was love God and love others. That's the greatest commandment. And he was a humble servant and never looked for glory even though he was God on earth and so I think that it was I just think it's kind of a, a neat observation and a neat fit to see that the most successful people in our company are the ones that follow that model um, that kind of biblical model of loving others and serving others and it's very you know contrary to a world view of um, I'm going to be the best and I want to be successful. And then when I'm successful and I'm number one in the company or number one in my organization, everybody look at me. I'm so great. You know, that's very much a kind of a worldview of what success looks like. And I love that it looks so different in our company and Plexus. It is so, so, so different. It is completely again, you know, again, sort of that kind of worldview. And so, um, 
anyway, those are my observations um, on sort of a one through 10. And like I said, I am not there yet and I'm striving to be, and I know all of you all are, are not there yet, but you're striving to be in that place as well. And so as we, you know, kind of unite together as a team and we are learning from one another and we um, are looking to our leaders to learn from, I just think these are kind of nice things to reflect on. Um, and so I did, you know, I don't often do this, but I do want to read because as I was coming up with the, the one through 10 list and making these observations and got to number one and number two, it reminded me of this, this verse, the scripture verse that I want to share with you guys. And it's Philippians 2, uh, verse 3. And it says, um, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility considers others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same of that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. So anyway, so I kind of want to finish the call with that idea and that just some kind of some thoughts to ponder. And I can't believe I actually got through a call in less than 45 minutes, you guys. I think it's a first. <laughs> um, so I, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end my call. Um, and if anybody has anything that they want to say or add or questions, I'll kind of leave it for a minute. You can kind of send me a little chat button on the, the bottom. Anyone? No? Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unmute you guys because if you got anything to say, I want to hear you. Great call. Everybody? Okay. All right. Hi, Beth. Hey, Beth. Please say hi to me because I just did all the talking and I couldn't see everybody. I see Beth. Hi. Karen. Hi, hi Lisa. Lisa. Hi. hi. I miss everybody. I know. Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. Tiffany just joined. Tiffany? Yeah. 